Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my first declutter video. I do have a couple of these coming your way. I'm planning on decluttering my collection over the next few days, but they'll probably go up on my channel over the next few weeks. So today I'm focusing on all of these products. I'm going to do powders. I also have primers, foundations, concealers, and setting sprays. Now I know that my collection is a little bit larger than the average person's collection, and I kind of debated whether or not I wanted to do declutter videos this year, because I think sometimes they can give off the wrong impression. If you guys are new to my channel, I've actually switched up my buying habits over the past year and I've cut back on buying makeup by a lot. I'm actually on a little bit of a product specific note buy, so I'm not buying any new primers or powders this year, which is good because obviously I do have enough. But you know, I do film YouTube videos, so of course my collection is a little bit larger than the average person's collection, but I have made an effort to cut back and I'm not somebody who's going to declutter just to buy all of this back again. So I just wanted to throw that out there in case you guys are new to my channel. That being said, it's still important to declutter. I don't use all of these products. My preferences have changed. And when it comes to complexion products, I might've purchased certain things thinking they would work out for me, but it could turn out that the undertone is off. It's a little bit too dark. It's a little bit too light. So once a year, I just like to go through and remove the products that I am not currently using. Just so you guys know, nothing is getting thrown away. Nothing is going to be wasted unless the product is old or expired, I always give it to somebody else. I have a ton of cousins, a lot of friends and family, sisters who enjoy the products. So I am going to give them to new homes so hopefully other people can enjoy them. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let's jump into it and I think I'll kick it off with foundation. This one is the CoverGirl Outlast All Day Stay Fabulous. I have the shade 810 Classic Ivory. I actually really like this foundation. I wore it years ago and then when CoverGirl went cruelty free, I picked it up again. But the undertone on this foundation is just a little bit off. I think it's slightly too pink for me. So I would like to try it in my particular shade, but I have a hard time with CoverGirl foundations. For some reason, the undertones are always just a little bit too pink for me. So as much as I like it, I am going to declutter it because I don't reach for it very often. I'm also going to declutter this Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. I love this foundation. It's actually one of my favorites, but again, the shade is just wrong for me. This is L1, which is way too light. I don't typically wear this foundation on its own. I usually mix it in with more of a mattifying foundation, and I just find that whenever I use this shade, it lightens the foundation too much. So I actually need to repurchase this in a darker shade. I used to have L3, but the bottle broke and I just haven't repurchased it in my correct shade. So as much as I love this, again, I just don't actually use this shade. So I am going to declutter this and repurchase it in my go-to shade. Actually, I might hold off on repurchasing that for now because I do have this foundation. I have two of these. These are the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundations. They are a hydrating formula. It's actually very, very similar to the Flower Beauty Foundation. And these actually work pretty well for me. I'm currently using the shade 1.05 and I typically mix it with my Fenty foundation. This one is 1.1, which is slightly darker, but I am going to hang on to both of these because they're pretty similar. I'm also going to keep this one. This one is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk. It is a newer release from CoverGirl. I have the shade F30 Fair Light. I feel like it might be a little bit too dark for me once summer rolls around, but right now it works perfectly. It's just a very lightweight foundation. It almost feels more like a tinted moisturizer, so I have been enjoying this one. I do have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. I do have two of these. I typically wear the shade Light 7W. That one seems to work the best for me, whether I'm wearing it on its own or mixing it in with another product. I feel like Light 6W probably works too. Let me just swatch these. Here's light 7W and here's light 6W. I mean, looking at the swatches, I would think that I wear light 6W and I feel like light 7W would be a little bit too dark for me, but I do wear light 7W. So I think because it is a tinted moisturizer, it's just a lot more forgiving on the skin. I think I'm going to keep both of them. I'm probably like two thirds of the way through with this one. And then I think I'll be able to, you know, make this one work for me. So instead of decluttering it and then repurchasing it. I think I'll hang on to both of them for now. So this is the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer. This is a super full coverage foundation. It actually reminds me a lot of the Urban Decay All Nighter, which I used to love. That used to be one of my go-to foundations. I don't think that I've reached for this in the past year. And if I haven't reached for a product in a year, then I definitely need to declutter it. I don't need to hang on to it and tell myself I will reach for it. Okay, I do have three of these e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundations. Again, 
again, it's tough because there's not one shade that works well for me. So typically I mix them together when I want to wear it. I really like this formula. I think it's a great everyday formula. So let me swatch these and then I'll figure out which, if any, I can declutter. Okay, this one is porcelain, this one is vanilla, and this one is sand. I actually think vanilla is a pretty close match for me. So I think I'm going to declutter porcelain and sand and hang on to vanilla. Okay, I also have three of this foundation. This is the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. So I have the shade 10 Light Beige, which matches me really well during the summertime, but it's a little bit too dark during the like winter and spring, and they actually released a couple of lighter shades as well. So I did purchase it, but I, I either forgot about this foundation or I just haven't been reaching for this formula because I haven't worn these lighter shades very much. So let me swatch these as well. Okay, so this one is 05 Ivory Beige. This one is 08 fair beige and then this one is 010 light beige. I am going to declutter ivory beige. That one is way too light for me. I think this one would actually work really well for me right now and then I, this one's almost gone. It's actually in my project pan for 2020 which you'll see that video next. So I'm going to hang on to that one and finish it up but I think that this one will work well for me maybe even during the summertime. This one is the Vanish Seamless Foundation. I have the shade Shell. They did send me a couple of shades a while ago, but I still think it's going to be way too dark for me, even during the summertime. Unfortunately, I need to declutter this one. It's pretty much brand new, so I'll just pass it along to somebody else. Okay, I do have another CoverGirl foundation. This one is the True Blend Matte Foundation. And again, it's just a little bit too pink for me. I don't even know if I like this formula because every time I go to wear it, I just feel like the undertone is so off. So I actually remove it and start over. So I do need to declutter this one because again, it just doesn't get used in my collection. Okay, these are actually primers. So let me move those over. This is the new Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. I have the shade L30, which is slightly too dark for me, but I can make this one work for me, especially with summer right around the corner. It's not so dark that I feel like I wouldn't get use out of it. I was going to repurchase it in the shade that I would wear, but it was sold out on Sephora's website. So I've just been making this one work for me. And it is a really nice foundation. It just looks so smooth on the skin. So I've really been enjoying this one. So I am going to keep it. This one is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation, which I do like. I think that this one is a good everyday foundation. It has more of a medium coverage finish. And I wouldn't say that it's super mattifying, but it's also not super hydrating. I think at this point, I do have a couple of other everyday foundations that I reach for over this one. It hasn't been one of my go-to foundations for a little while. And as much as I like it, I feel like somebody else would get more use out of it than I do. So I think I'm actually going to declutter this one as well. Okay, I do have three Fenty foundations. It took me such a long time to find like my go-to Fenty shade. And this is my favorite foundation out of everything. It's very full coverage. It's very mattifying. But if I don't want like a super intense full coverage matte finish, I'll just mix it with one of my hydrating foundations, but I do love this. So typically I wear the shade 140. I've actually almost finished this up. I think that I have a little bit left, so I am going to hang on to this one. I also have the shades 120 and 150. 120 is just way too light for me. 140 matches me pretty well during the winter time, so I don't think I need 120 any longer. 150 is a little bit too dark for me and it has more of a neutral undertone, but again, I think I can make it work if I'm mixing in more of a hydrating foundation. It's pretty close to 140, like 140 is my go-to shade, but I think I'll, I'll try to use this one a little bit more before I get rid of it. So I will declutter 120. I do have two of the Urban Decay Stay Naked foundations. I have 20YW and 30YW. I think I'm actually going to keep both of these because I do typically mix these together when I wear them. And then I just have two of these Makeup Revolution Conceal and Hydrate foundations. I have F5.7 and F5. Again, I think these are a little bit off for me, but let me just swatch them. Okay, here's F5.7, here's F5. I have such a hard time with Makeup Revolution foundations. I can never find my go-to shade online because I mean, looking at the numbers like 5 and 5.7, you wouldn't expect them to be so different, but they really are. So I'm going to declutter 5 and keep 5.7. Okay, so these are the foundations that I'm left with. I feel pretty happy with these. I don't want to get rid of anything else. I decluttered 11 and kept 14. So I got rid of about 45%, which is pretty good. I wasn't planning on getting rid of so many, but I didn't realize that a lot of the shades weren't working well for me, but I think that's what happens when you order online. So unfortunately I have to get rid of a couple, but I will pass them along to other people. So let's move on to, uh, let's do concealers and then I'll do primers. So 
So as for concealers, I have the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. This one is in the shade Snow. The shade Almond is actually like my go-to concealer, but I recently used it up completely. And Snow is just a little bit too light for me. I could probably use it as like a highlighting concealer, but it's just not something that I reach for very often. So I'm going to declutter this one. Again, for some reason when it comes to CoverGirl products, I buy the wrong shade. I don't know why. So I bought one that was way too light for me and one that was way too dark for me. And again, because it's off, I just never end up reaching for them. So I need to go into an actual store once, of course, all of this craziness is over and buy a shade that works well for me because if it's off, I'm just not going to reach for it. So I am going to declutter these. They're pretty much brand new. I have a couple of concealers from e.l.f. This one is their 16 hour camo concealer. Obviously, one of my pugs got a hold of this one, but this is the shade Light Sand, which is my go-to. It's a little bit light for me, but I do reach for this when I want more of a brightening shade. I also have the shade Light Beige, which is a little bit too dark for me. And then I have the Hydrating Camo Concealer in the shade light beige as well. The hydrating camo concealer is not my favorite on its own, but sometimes I feel like the regular camo concealer is just a little bit too mattifying. So I will mix them together on occasion. So I think because of that, I will declutter the regular camo concealer in the shade light beige because it is a little bit too dark for me anyways. I do have two of the Urban Decay Stay Naked Correcting Concealers. So I have the shade 20YW and then I also have 30NN. 20YW is just slightly too light. 30NN is actually in my project pan. So I am going to keep 30NN and then declutter 20YW. I do have the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer. This one is in the shade Fair, which I think is either the lightest or second to lightest. I actually really like this formula. I do find it to be really hydrating, really comfortable. But again, the shade is just a little bit off for me. It's a little bit too pink toned. And I do have another hydrating concealer that I will reach for over this one, just because the shade matches me a little bit better. So I am going to declutter this one as well. The hydrating concealer that I have been reaching for more than that one is this one from ColourPop. This is their Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. I have two different shades. So I have Light 45W and then Fair 15W. I actually mix these together to get my perfect shade and that seems to work really well for me. So I am going to hang on to this one. I do have quite a few of these ColourPop no filter concealers. I thought I decluttered them, but I think they might have sent me a package with quite a few. So I kept some of them thinking they would work well for me. But the shade that I typically wear is light 16 or light 18. I actually wear it as foundation. And if I want to even out my skin tone, but I don't want to wear like a full coverage foundation, I'll just use this concealer. I have a whole video on my channel where I do that if you want to check it out. But none of these are light 16 or light 18. I know that I have light 16 somewhere in my room, but um, medium 22, actually, I think I might keep this one because I feel like I can mix that in during the summertime once I get a little bit of a tan, but the rest of these are way too light. Okay, the last thing in here is from Hourglass. This is their Veil Retouching Fluid. It's not really a concealer. You can kind of use it to fix your foundation and maybe like touch things up. I think it's a cool product, but it's just not something I wear very often these days. So I'm also going to declutter this. Okay, so I decluttered 11 and I kept six. I decluttered way more than I was thinking. I don't know why I had so many shades that were off for me, but sometimes that just kind of happened. So these are obviously the shades that will work for me and I'm going to focus on using these over the next few months and then I'll kind of see where I'm at and decide if I want to try a new formula. But for now, I do wanna focus on using these for a while. So these are the foundations and concealers I'm keeping and these are all of the ones I'm decluttering. I didn't realize that I had so many to declutter, but I am happy about it because I know for a fact that all of these foundations and shades work well for me. So now there's not really any guesswork when I open up my drawer. So I'm going to pass all of these products along and hopefully somebody else can enjoy them. Okay, I don't know why, but my primer collection has gotten out of hand. I actually haven't purchased a new primer in a long time and obviously for good reason. So I want all of my primers to fit really well in like this section. I don't wanna have it overflowing. It's This is just way too many primers. So let me kind of pull out a few that I know I'm going to keep. I am going to keep both of these Catrice primers. These are two of my favorites. They're actually in my project pan right now, but I love these. I love this one for days where I feel like my skin is just looking a little bit rough and I want it to look extra smooth and mattified. And I love this one on days where I need an extra dose of hydration. So I'm definitely keeping both of these. I'm also keeping this one from Ula Henriksen. This one is the Banana Bright Face Primer. 
this one is also in my project pan. It's such a great option if you have really large pores or again, you deal with a lot of texture because it just makes your skin look so smooth and even. So I do love all three of these. I'm also keeping this Smashbox primerizer. It's very similar to the Catrice primer that I kept, but I'm almost done with that one. So instead of running out and repurchasing it, I feel like I could use this one. I just kind of use them interchangeably. I love them both. So I'm going to keep this one as well. Okay, let's declutter a few. So I'm going to declutter this from Charlotte Tilbury. I have two of them. This is the Wonder Glow Instant Soft Focus Beauty Flash. I don't know if it's technically a primer, it says use under foundation for a lit from within luminosity or you can use over foundation. I've had this in my collection for a while. These are like deluxe size samples and I've never used them. I've swatched it a couple of times, but it's just not a product I reach for. So I am going to declutter these. I'm also going to declutter these. These are actually very, very similar to the Catrice primer. And again, because I'm keeping the Catrice primer and the Smashbox primerizer, I don't think I need these as well. I think all four of these work well. So if there's a certain brand that you like, or you know, for some reason, one of these appeal to you more than the others, I don't think you would be disappointed by any of them, but I just don't need to keep all four of them. There's no way I'll use them all up before they expire. So I'm going to pass these two along because I do like these two just a little bit better. I'm going to declutter this Physicians Formula Bright Booster Oil Elixir. I don't wear oil type primers a whole lot. I might reach for them on occasion, but typically I'll just reach for more of a moisturizing primer in general. So I'm going to pass this one along. It's pretty much brand new. So I'm sure somebody can get use out of it. What else do I have? So I have these Becca primers. I've had these in my collection for a very long time. This one is the Backlight Priming Filter. It makes your skin look very, very glowy. And then this one is the the first light priming filter, which is more of a moisturizing primer. It doesn't give you such an intense glow. I've definitely gotten use out of these over the years, but they've never really been like my go-to primers. I know a lot of people like these and I have recommended them. I think they work well. Typically they go on sale during Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty. I actually think this one is included in the spring sale. So if you can get them for a discounted price, I do think they're worth it. But again, I just have so many other primers that I reach for over and over that I feel like there's no point in keeping these in my collection any longer. I don't typically go for a super glowy look with a primer like this. And if I do... I guess I just don't. I usually go for more of a moisturized look. So I am going to declutter these finally. I just don't reach for them very often. Okay, so I do wanna keep the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. This one is more of a moisturizing primer, but it also locks your foundation into place all day long. I honestly can't believe that I have so many primers. I don't think that I realized I had accumulated so many. I do have the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer, which is one of my favorites. I've loved this one for such a long time. I think it was one of the very first products that I ever tried from Hourglass, and it just gives your skin like the most beautiful, smooth effect. I haven't used it for a very long time. I think that it kind of got lost in the shuffle, so I am going to put it in my everyday makeup drawer for spring and see if I fall back in love with it. If not, I might declutter it at the end of the spring season. Season, but for now I am going to hang on to it. I'm also going to keep my Farsali Liquid Powder Oil Balancing Serum. It's called a serum, but I actually use it as a primer just to prep my skin for makeup. You can use it both ways. It's kind of like an all-in-one product, but it just leaves your skin super matte. It's the most mattifying primer that I've tried. And at first I wasn't sure if I liked it, but I've come to appreciate it because I do have very oily skin. So I love this product. I'm definitely not getting rid of it. I actually have another product from Farsali. This one is the Liquid Glass Serum. This one is more of a moisturizing serum. You know, when it comes down to it, Farsali products are pretty expensive. And I do think that this one is worth the money because I haven't tried anything else like it. I'm not convinced that this one is worth the high-end price tag yet. I've only used it a few times. So I'm actually going to put this one in my everyday makeup drawer as well so I can make my mind up for sure. But I do enjoy it so far. I'm just not 100% positive. So I need to keep testing this one out. I have two more Catrice primers. So this one is a color correcting primer. If you have red skin, which I actually do have pretty red skin, you can use this and it will kind of neutralize your skin tone. And then I have this one, which is supposed to blur pores. I actually haven't really given either one of these a fair chance, which is weird because I love these two so much. So I think I am going to hang on to these two and really put them to the test before I decide if I want to keep them or declutter them. Okay, my primer section is getting pretty full over here, so I think I'm only going to hang on to like one or two more of them. So I can actually declutter this one. This one is the NYX Angel Veil. It's actually a dupe for the Hourglass Veil. They're pretty much the same exact product, but because I am keeping the one from Hourglass, I'm going to declutter this one from NYX, just because I don't need two since they are so similar. 
So I do have the Smashbox Photo Finish Pore Minimizing Primer. I think I'm going to declutter this one because I do have this one from Catrice. The Keep Me Matte actually does work really well to minimize my pores and just kind of make everything look very smooth. So I don't think I need to keep this one from Smashbox. And then I'm also going to declutter this one from Touch and Soul. It is the No Problem Prime Essence. I don't love this product. It's like a super watery serum and it just doesn't do much to prep my skin for foundation. That being said, the Touch and Soul No Problem Primer does work really well for me. It's a very smoothing primer. And again, if I'm struggling with texture or really large pores, this product works really well to fill them in. So my foundation will just glide on top really nicely. So I am going to keep that one. And then I think I'm going to keep this one from ColourPop as well. It is their Pretty Fresh Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Primer. I've only used this one a few times because again, I think it just got buried by all of my other primers. So I do want to put this one to the test and see if it is a good option or not. The few times that I've used it, I've enjoyed it, but I want to see if it outperforms some of my other favorites. I have this little mini Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is so old, like years old at this point, and there's only a little bit left. So I'm actually going to declutter this. And then I have these Rodeal Soft Focus Glow Drops. I got this in a BoxyCharm. They leave your skin super glowy, really, really beautiful. I think that I might like this one better than the Farsali Serum. So I'm going to keep this one as well and kind of put it to the test. I'm going to put quite a few of these primers in my everyday makeup drawer for spring. And then at the end of spring, I might declutter a couple more, but I feel like that's pretty good for now. Okay, so I decluttered 11 and I kept 13, so I got rid of 45%. So again, I'm really happy with that. I cut my primer collection in half. My primer collection was getting so out of hand. But again, because I am on a primer no buy, these are all of the primers that I'll have for the rest of the year. And I think I'll be able to declutter it a little bit more once I kind of you know, discover what works well for me and which ones don't because a couple of them are still newer to my collection. So I am really happy with that. Let's go through the powders. Okay, I have a feeling that I'm not going to get rid of as many powders because I do work my way through my powder collection and I go through powder pretty quickly. It's something that I constantly use up. So I don't anticipate that I will declutter too many of them. But again, if there's a shade that's wrong for me or something that I don't reach for, I will declutter it. Okay, so let's start in the back. This one is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Diffused Light. I love using this one as a highlight powder. As you can tell, there is a significant dip in here. I always use this to kind of brush under my eyes after I do my makeup or just kind of, you know, brush all over my face to brighten things up. So I'm definitely hanging on to this one. This one is the Bite Beauty Change Maker Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder. I have the shade Light One. This is newer to my collection. I really do like this one. It just gives your skin a very smooth effect. I am going to declutter this one. It is the Milani Conceal Imperfect Powder. I have the shade 01 Fair. This is like a true powder foundation. It's pretty full coverage. I originally purchased it and kind of discovered it as a dupe for the Kat Von D powder foundation when I really liked that one and I was looking for an alternative. So if you do like a full coverage powder foundation, I think you'll like this one. I just typically don't reach for such heavy powders these days and I feel like it's a little bit too powdery for me. So I don't think I've used it probably at all in the past year or very, very rarely if I did. So I'm actually going to declutter this one. This one is the Catrice Prime and Fine Mattifying Powder. I, oh, I didn't realize I had such a small amount left. So I'm actually going to probably put this in my project pan so I can use it up completely. I do like this one. It's not necessarily one of my go-to powders because I almost find that it's too lightweight. But because I'm almost done with it, no, you know what? I'm actually just going to declutter it. I have so many powders here and this one's been sitting in my collection for a while. I feel like I could finish it, but I don't think I would necessarily enjoy finishing it and I'd rather focus on something else. So I'm going to declutter this one. I changed my mind. This one is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Setting Powder. I love using this one during the summertime. It just leaves my skin really mattified and it seems to lock any foundation in place really well. I actually have two of these. I thought that I only had one. It is the Healthy Powder from Physicians Formula. So I just put one of these in my project pan. I think it was the shade LM3, which does seem to be a pretty good match for me. I did have another shade. I think I had LN2, but I actually broke it. So I put this one in my project pan. I feel like LN4 might be a little bit too dark for me right now. It could probably work during the summertime, but I think since, you know, I've only used it once or twice, I'm just going to pass this one along. So I will keep one and declutter one. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Powder. I have the shade Porcelain. 
again, I kind of forgot about this one because I feel like I've been focusing on a lot of other powders, but this one again is a very smooth powder. It reminds me a lot of the Bite Beauty powder and I do enjoy this one. So I am going to keep this one. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I am getting pretty close to finishing this one up. For a while I stopped using it and I've kind of been focusing on using it as more of a touch up powder. So I'm actually going to move this one to my purse, but I am going to keep it. This one is the Essence All About Matte Fixing Compact Powder. I'm also going to keep this one. Again, I know that I have quite a few powders, but I will work my way through them. Trust me, I go through powders so quickly. And this is kind of one of my go-tos during the summertime because it is so mattifying. I'm actually going to decluttered this one. It is the Catrice Light Illusion Loose Powder. It is a yellow toned powder. I just don't find that I reach for yellow toned powders very often. My Hourglass Powder in Diffused Light has like a slight yellow hint. So if I ever feel like I need a yellow correcting powder, I usually reach for that one. So I will declutter this one. I also just put the Urban Decay Stay Naked Powder Foundation in my project pan. Again, that video will be up next, I believe, but this isn't one of my go-to powders, but I like it enough that I feel like I can make it work for me instead of just getting rid of it. So I am going to hang on to this one, try to finish it up this year. I have the shade 20YW. Okay, I have a couple of powders left. So I'm actually going to declutter this one. It is the CoverGirl True Blend Minerals Powder. I put this in my everyday makeup drawer last time I did one, like three months ago, and I didn't use it once. I'm just not super big into loose powders. I have like one or two that I like, but it's not really my go-to, I prefer a pressed powder formula. So because this is brand new and I gave myself the chance to use it and I didn't use it, I'm just going to pass it along. I do like the Too Faced Peach Perfect Loose Powder. I only have a little bit of this left, but it is one of my go-to products because it is super mattifying. So I am so happy because I thought I only had a mini version of my Urban Decay Velvetizer. And it looks like they are discontinuing this product. And a lot of you guys told me it's actually on Hope Look. So I did purchase two mini versions of this because I use it to set my under eyes or my under eye concealer, and this is almost gone, but I discovered apparently that I do have a full-sized version of it. I don't know how much is actually left, but there's a good amount left, so I am glad because if they are discontinuing this, I don't know what I'm going to do or what I'll use to set my under eye concealer. For some reason, this is just my go-to product. So of course I'm going to keep this as well. I do have the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I do like this product. I think that it just gives your skin a really smooth effect, but I don't think that I reach for it as much as I should because it is such a beautiful product and I don't use it as much as I feel like somebody else would. I think I'm actually going to pass this product along to somebody else. I feel torn because I do like it, but I just, I prefer pressed powders overall, and I'm sure somebody would get a lot of use out of this. And then the last three products are in my project pan as well. So I have the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Pressed, the e.l.f. Perfect Finish HD Powder, and then the Fenty Beauty Loose Powder. So I'm going to keep these because I am working on finishing them up this year. So I kept 14 powders. I only decluttered six, which is only 30%, but I didn't think that I would declutter too many powders because I do work my way through them. So by the end of the year, I feel like I will have used up quite a few of these. So these are all of the powders and primers that I'm keeping, and these are all of the ones that I'm getting rid of. I just realized I had one more powder. This one is the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder. I just have like a little mini version, which I do enjoy. So I'm going to hang on to this one as well. Let's finish up with setting sprays. I have way too many setting sprays. Initially, I was going to do a video where I compared all of these and shared the best and the worst, but honestly, I'm just not a big setting spray person. I go through phases and sometimes I really love setting spray, but even then, I, I really reach for like the same one over and over. So the majority of these are pretty much brand new. I've used them like once or twice, and I just need to pass them along so somebody else can enjoy them. They don't need to sit in my collection and go unused. So I am going to keep the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. This one is my go-to. It locks my foundation into place so well. I typically reach for this during the summertime, so I do have two mini versions of this as well that I will hang on to. I'm also going to keep the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. I don't use this as a setting spray, but I do use it to prep my skin before makeup application. I am going to declutter the Too Faced Hangover RX. You can use this one as a priming spray or a setting spray, but it's never become one of my essential staples, so I just want to pass this product along. I have two from ColourPop. I have the All Star Face Setting Spray and the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist. I think these work well, but again, when I use a setting spray, I just want a mattifying setting spray, one that locks things into place all day long. And obviously the Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist is more of a glowy mist. 
And the all-star setting spray is good, but it's not as good as the Urban Decay all-nighter. So I need to cut it down. I'm going to declutter both of these. I kind of feel torn on these because I don't think I really put either one of these to the test and I got so many recommendations to try them out. So I have the NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray and the Milani Make It Last. I think I am going to keep the Milani Make It Last because I get a ton of recommendations to try this one. So I will put this one to the test. I don't get as many recommendations to try NYX, and again, they're both brand new. I don't feel like I need both of them. So I will declutter this one and keep the Milani one for now. I've had this in my drawer for over a year for sure. This is the Pixie Glow Mist. I hear so many good things about this, but again, because I do have oily skin, I'm not typically looking for a super glowy effect. I just prefer more of a matte finish overall. So I know somebody in my life who has dry skin would love this product. So I am going to pass this along. I've had these for such a long time. This one is pretty much empty. I think it is empty. There might be like one or two uses left, but I've had these for years. They work extremely well. I've heard that Scandinavia makes the same setting sprays as like the Urban Decay All Nighter. So there's, there's a good amount left in this one. I think I'll keep this one and then just declutter this one or maybe use it up because there are like one or two sprays left. So I'll use it up and then get rid of it. The Flower Beauty Seal the Deal setting spray is nice, but it's not as mattifying as the Urban Decay All Nighter. And again, I know myself when I reach for a setting spray, I just need more of a matte finish like the Urban Decay All Nighter. So I'm going to pass this one along, even though I do think it is a good option. And then I do have the Ofra Makeup Fixer. Again, I haven't used this. I feel embarrassed that I bought these products and I didn't actually test a lot of them out, but I hear rave reviews about this product. So I think I'm going to put this one to the test as well. So I am going to test the Ofra one and the Milani one. I'll put them in my everyday makeup drawer for spring and see if I like them and I'll update you guys and let you know. All right, let me just kind of rearrange this and then I'll show you guys what it looks like in the end. Okay, I spread things out a little bit, but this is what my makeup collection looks like after. So I'll give you guys a shot of the before and then the after. I think that I got rid of probably more than half of my products. Let me actually count for those of you that are number people. So I started with 100 products and I decluttered 46, which is almost 50%. I feel like that's pretty good. I was not planning on decluttering so much, but you know, Sometimes it's just necessary. When you go through your collection and you realize there are shades that don't work for you or products that you don't reach for, there's no point in keeping them if you can pass them along to somebody else. So I am happy with this. I feel like I know that I love all of these products with the exception of a couple that I have to test out, but it's just a lot more manageable and I'm, I'm just happy with a more curated collection these days. I have this entire tray of products that I will be passing on to friends and family. There are quite a few products in here that are pretty much brand new. So I'm sure other people will be able to use and enjoy these products, which does make me happy rather than just having them sit in my collection, you know, going unused. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and make sure to stay tuned because I will be filming more declutter videos. They'll be coming your way over the next few weeks, but I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.